Most farmers have to bring their product to the consumer, but here at Lee Turkey Farm in East Windsor, New Jersey, the consumer comes to the product. Isn't that right, Ronnie? That's correct. This is a you pick it farm. You pick farm, correct. Tell me about how it works. Well, how it works is people come here with their families mostly. It's a family event, and they want to get fresh produce along with experience of finding out that uh, fruits and vegetables just don't come from the aisles in the supermarket. So I know this farm has been in the family for a while. Has it always been a you pick farm? Well, the farm has been in the family since 1868. I'm the sixth generation. And no, it hasn't always been you pick. Uh, my father and mother started it in uh, 1964, and this was the very first one to go all together retail you pick in New Jersey. So, Ronnie, I see you got some Brussels sprouts here. That's a late uh, growing crop. Yes. Is that how you keep customers coming out? So year round with different kinds of crops that come at different times? Absolutely. You could have a billboard saying you got Brussels sprouts, nobody's coming, okay. right? Yeah, but not if, everyone loves Brussels sprouts. Right, Brussels but sprouts. if you have a sign saying strawberries or peaches or apples or pumpkins, they're coming. And then what you do is you plant the other things like the broccoli and the Brussels sprouts and the other little vegetables along the way. And as they're coming out to pick, they see them, they buy them. Ronnie, you got a ton of eggplants here. Many farmers grow eggplant in New Jersey. New Jersey's number one producer in the United States. Is that because the climate is so good, you think? That, the climate is huge, and also we have a very uh, large amount of people that just like eggplant. How do you like to pick the eggplant? What do you look for when you're picking eggplant? Well, when I'm looking to pick eggplant, I'm looking for a good dark color. But eggplant, for the most part, whether it's big or small, is going to taste the same. It's kind of like peppers. Well, Ronnie, this cabbage looks great, but I know it's been a tough year in terms of weather with all the rain. The normal year here in New Jersey, we get 46 inches of rain. In the past five weeks, we've had 24. And how has the cabbage held up so well? This variety seems to hold up pretty good. It's called Stonehead. Well, I can definitely make a great dish out of this. It looks, it looks terrific. Have you ever had a cabbage curry before? I haven't. Well, Ronnie told me that Janet, his wife, is the cook in the house. So I'm flattered to be in your kitchen and I get to cook with all these great ingredients that we harvested from your farm. What are you going to make? I am going to make moussaka. Well, the first thing that I'm going to make is an eggplant caponata. So maybe you could help me dice up some of these eggplants that we harvested in the field. You don't need to peel them. It's really easy. All you have to do is take off the tops. All right. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour a lot of olive oil and I'm going to add plenty of salt because it's going to help to bring out the, the, the water. So the eggplant is ready here and so I can basically now just add the remaining ingredients, garlic, some onions. This just gets cooked in to soften them. So it's looking really good already and maybe you can help me add these remaining ingredients. So okay. I just have uh, canned tomatoes and I'm going to use a balsamic vinegar okay. for the acidity. It also adds quite a bit of sweetness. And I'm going to add a little bit of briny flavor with capers, a third of a cup of dark brown sugar. And that's going to make it really nice and sweet. So why don't you start adding a little bit of chili flakes there, okay. just to give it a little bit of heat. And I'm going to add some uh, freshly ground salt, and a little bit of black pepper, and I'm going to add a stick of cinnamon and some golden raisins. So I'll put this back up on the heat. So tell me about your recipe. I am just going to cube up that and eggplant. Now I normally, my recipes calls for this to be peeled. I'm going to brown the ground turkey and the onion. Okay. And then I'm going to layer that mixture with the zucchini and eggplant. So I'll add about a cup of this diced onion to the turkey mixture. Okay, so basically you just have to put the... I'm going to put a little bit of this on the bottom. I'm going to get the red sauce ready to pour in with the ground turkey. Great, okay. It's just so a little you... tomato sauce. And I'm going to add a little bit of cooking wine. It's about a third cup. Okay. And then I'm going to add a teaspoon of basil. So you got dried basil and dry oregano. Yeah. What's the final step here with the moussaka? So I'm making a white sauce. Well, what we could do is we could um, add the flour first and then just whisk in the milk. Okay. And then you put it on the stove top just long enough until it thickens. Uh, it looks great. It does look good. Oh, yeah. I am just going to put half of this over that and then we'll add the rest of the eggplant zucchini. Okay. 
and then we're just gonna put the cheese sauce on top okay. of it right. and we'll bake it. I'm gonna add some yeah, that's cheese. Yeah, that's gonna be great. That's gonna add such a nice flavor. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Okay. And we're just gonna put it over the top of it. Okay. So you're gonna slip that in the oven and we can get started on the Thai curry. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deal with the cabbage here and then I'm gonna use some classic Thai flavors. We've got uh, ginger, lemongrass, tomatoes, and limes. Go ahead and add the garlic and onions here. And coconut milk is really important in Thai cooking and that's sort of the base of the broth for this curry. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water and I'm gonna add the cabbage. And I'm gonna throw in the ginger, and the lemongrass, the red curry paste, and I'm gonna add the green peppers, and I'm gonna add some fresh limes. You're adding it with the rind and everything. Yeah, the rind has a ton of flavor, so you don't wanna leave that out. Okay, Janet, it's almost time to eat. I'm just gonna put a couple last finishing touches on this curry, okay. and the Four things I want to add. It already smells great. Can you smell yeah. that? Yeah, it's really great. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of brown sugar and then fish sauce. And fish sauce is one of the most important seasonings in Thai cooking. And then I'm going to add some of these fresh tomatoes from your farm. And then I'm going to add some fresh basil and put this back on the heat for a couple, only a couple minutes more. And then we can serve it over some jasmine rice and chow down. Okay. All right, Janet, we're gonna do a little dish exchange. You'll taste mine, and I'll taste yours. All right, I'm excited. But this is delicious. I could eat this all day. And the best part about it is that it's right from the backyard. Yeah.